Hey, welcome to Collins Creatures. This is Sydney, my anthill python, and she is the smallest species of python in the world. And I thought a cool topic for a video would be to compare the smallest species of python to the largest species. But before that, let's talk about Sydney and anthill pythons. Anthill pythons are, like I said, the smallest species of python in the world, and they belong to the genus Antaresia, which contains four really small pythons, with the anthill python being the smallest, and there's also the Stimson's python, the spotted python, and the largest being the children's python, getting up to a very rare maximum of five feet. Anthill pythons are from the Australian outback in Western Australia, where they eat Gehira geckos which are tiny little lizards, and their, and their species name is Perthensis because they live near the city of Perth, which is in Western Australia. As a baby, they will have a spotted pattern, which will generally fade as they get older, but Sydney's has actually stayed. Antil pythons get a maximum length of around two feet long, with Sydney being 20 inches and around two ounces in weight. So while Sydney may get a little bit bigger, she is what I would classify as a full grown adult. So this is Jesse Rothaker and he is the director of Forgotten Friends Reptile Sanctuary and he is bringing us our largest python in the world, the reticulated python. Hello so folks. Uh, good to see everyone. This is Willie. He's a reticulated python. He's a little bit of a handful, but he's happy to be here with us too. So how big do reticulated pythons get? Well, the record's over 30 feet long, which is enormous. It makes him the longest snake species in the world. Although it's not the heaviest, it's easily the longest. We don't usually see record-sized snakes. I mean, there are humans that have measured well over eight or nine feet. That's not typical. So typical for this kind of snake, if it's over 20 feet, it's still a very large snake. Uh, we still on Earth today are seeing some reticulated pythons that will grow in excess of 20 feet. It's still regarded as a very large snake at that size. Uh, Willie here, he's right in the 14 foot range. So we expect him to keep growing a little bit as he ages, but we don't think he's gonna turn into a 20 foot python. He certainly is big. It looks like a handful. Yeah, yeah. As he, if I seem distracted, it's because reticulated pythons, for being so giant, they still seem to have the speed and metabolism of a corn snake or a rat snake or a king snake. They just kind of never stop. I would say they're maybe not as active as something like a ribbon snake, which is really high speed, or a racer, which is really high speed, uh, but they are really close to it. You can see his size <laughs> is not stopping him from being curious and wanting to explore every inch of this sofa. So Jesse, you probably got Willie as a rescue and the size and their activity probably has something to do with that. Yeah, sure does. Some of the larger snake species are the ones that are surrendered to rescues the most often. And Willie was no exception. He was, I think, around eight feet long when he started to outgrow his welcome. Eight feet long compared to this 14 foot long snake, that's probably maybe a third or a quarter of the weight that he is now. I mean, there's a lot of muscle growth and girth that happens between eight feet long and 14 feet long. So if you're thinking about getting a pet snake, please don't start with the giant snakes. These are not a beginner snake. They really take a lot of time, a lot of space, a lot of muscle, and also a lot of money to be able to take care of them to heat them properly, to contain them properly. We've had reticulated pythons come into our rescue because they kept escaping in their neighborhood. I mean, that's not a good way to make friends with your neighbors. So if you're thinking about getting a pet python, this is not the beginner snake. So that's a good segue into the actual care for these animals. So starting with Sydney, Antil pythons or any of the Antaresia species are fairly simple to take care of because they don't require a lot of space because they get very small. They don't require any humidity seeing as they live in Australia. And while they do need a lot of heat seeing as how they're from the desert, it's not excessive and any heat pad would do. And they also eat small prey. Sydney eats a pinky mouse once every week. And Jesse, how big of an enclosure do you need for a retic, and how hot and how humid do they need, and what do they eat? 
Well, let's put it this way. You're not gonna bring a tank home from the pet store that fits a snake like this. Uh, you might be able to start with a hatchling that's around 18 inches and have them in a glass tank, but as they make their way to 18 feet or longer, they're going to need some sort of a custom cage, in some cases their own bedroom. The, the cages that we have our big snakes in are six or eight foot cages and we use a few different kinds there's some vision cages some animal plastics some neodeshes but imagine if you would um, cages that are plastic on all sides with sliding glass on the front and that helps hold in humidity and that also helps hold in the heat now one of the challenges with heating a snake that's over 100 pounds that's a lot of snake to heat without creating a fire hazard and so You've got to be very careful. You don't want to get it too hot with a giant snake that knocks things over that could create a fire hazard, but you also don't want them to be too cold that they can't digest the giant meals, which we're going to see later in this video. So you have to find that right balance. So we do, uh, we do some heat bulbs, we do some heat panels, we do some heat pads, and then we do actually just some heat in the room, some ambient temperatures with an overhead propane heater that heats the whole entire room. So there's a lot that goes into getting everything just right. And we know the humidity is not always just right because sometimes he will get partial sheds and when his whole skin is not coming off, that's a sign to us that we are a little bit off on our humidity. And so we'll add humidity or we might give him a big tub he can soak in, um, giving him chances to be in the bath or giving them extra, extra humidity by soaking down their bedding are some of the ways that we increase humidity in his enclosure to get a good full shed cycle. And I'm glad you mentioned the size of a baby reticulated python because hatchling retics are around the same size or even bigger because they weigh more than an adult anthill python. It's quite a difference. So this is a snake, if you could imagine, would have started maybe around that big, you know, around the size of your anthill python. So they're gonna start around 18 inches, but it doesn't take long before they go from that 18 inches to 18 feet and even beyond. You know, with records closer to 30 feet, it's not unusual you get a big female reticulated python who's getting proper heat and nutrition that's going to exceed 20 feet long. I mean, that's just a lot of snake. It certainly is. For reference, I feed Sydney one of something around this size once every week, which could feed, which this amount could feed her for up to two years. So I feed Willie, my reticulated python, something from this bag or this bag, in fact, maybe two or three or five of the things from these bags uh, every few weeks or so. But if he was really hungry, he could easily take down something like a small pig, small goat. We fed him a large rooster just the other week. And if you don't want the largest species of python, nor the smallest, you can get more reasonably sized pythons like ball pythons, Wilma pythons, green tree pythons, white lip pythons, and golem pythons. Well, there's actually dozens of more reasonably sized pythons. We're not going to name everyone though. Except for carpet pythons like my diamond jungle jaguar carpet python, BB snake, and Jesse's carpets. Golly, that is a pretty snake. Thank you. This is just a little representation of how big this snake is compared to Sydney. So that is the smallest and largest python in the world. I'd like to thank Jesse for being in my video and helping me out getting the reticulated python. Um, so Jesse, where can people find you? Well, we're on YouTube at Forgotten Friend Reptile TV. So come visit us at Forgotten Fred Reptile TV and thanks for giving reptiles a chance. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and I'll see you next time on Colin's, Colin's Creatures. Creatures.